Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered his 2020 State of the Nation address in Parliament on Thursday night. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack some of the big economic themes that arose in the speech. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Chanel. What was the President's main message with regard to the economy? Well I think that he went straight to the fact that it, we are in crisis and that we need to get the fundamentals right, both within government and within our social compacting with the other social partners so that we can get back on a growth trajectory. And to do that, we really need to encourage or create the foundations for higher levels of investment. Those high levels of investment are important to get job creation going again. And without job creation, without investment, this economy is not going to grow at the levels that it needs to grow in order to deal with its social, pro social crisis. And, if, and these, are, these are on multiple fronts, but unemployment obviously being the biggest one. And then, you know, dealing with and addressing uh, the backlogs, the inequality, the education backlogs, the service delivery backlogs. Without growth, without investment, uh, we, are, we are not going to actually be able to deal with those. What proposals did he make for tackling the electricity crisis? I think this was a central theme of the State of the Nation 2020. And I think that uh, a, a large portion of this was dedicated to developing power generation capacity outside of Eskom. And there were some very practical uh, steps on interventions announced by the President. And uh, these relate to, for instance, getting the Integrated Resource Plan 2019, which has been published all the way back in, in October last year, actually getting it implemented. We've had massive delays, and the main delay is that we don't have a, uh, a ministerial determination, a Section 34 determination to get that moving. One component of that RP is the self-generation component. There's a column uh, in the 2019 RP document that allows for distributed generation. And in the first three years of that uh, integrated resource plan, there's going, there's going to be no limit on what distribution de generation. It's an open-ended allocation, and it, th that is to respond to the fact that we have an emergency shortfall of at least 3,000 megawatts. So there's the self-generation component, and there we need a schedule, uh, an update to Schedule 2 of the Electricity Re Regulation Act. And we did see that mm. Minister Gwede Mantash announced at the mining in Darba that there would be a new Schedule 2, and that would open, unlock the issue of, uh, of self-generation. In parallel, we need to get the emergency generation to close that immediate gap that the President said is going to be with us for some time, which Eskom has also outlined is going to be with us some, for some time. Given the state of Eskom's plant and the need for maintenance, there's going to be a period where we're going to have a serious energy gap and we're going to have to close it probably with some short-term, hopefully not too expensive remedies for closing that. And we'll have to weigh that up. Is load shedding scheduled load shedding may be cheaper than some of the solutions that are going to be proposed. But again, these are some of the things that, are, that have been announced. And then also importantly, allowing new actors to procure energy, especially municipalities. Now, this is not an easy uh, 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 implementation. I think there are municipalities that are, are in a position to do that. Cape Town's been champing at the bit for many years. And I imagine some of the larger metros would also be in a position. But it's not for everyone, and I don't think it's going to be a, a sort of broad-based, um, a new procurement base in terms of municipal generation. But again, the RP uh, uh, allows for that. But I think the main thing <coughs> is that we've got away from some of the, the, the sort of not so d helpful ideas directionally around how to close the South Africa electricity gap. And those not so helpful ideas, I suppose, are still kicking around, but things like setting up a new state-owned generating company Thank goodness uh, that was not mentioned in the State of the Nation and so therefore should not be a priority for the, the Energy Minister. But as I say, it's probably going to be kicking around for some time. We're really on a more logical trajectory for closing the gap. We realise that Eskom doesn't have the, the financial wherewithal to do it. And therefore it's going to be a partnership effort with the private sector. We can see there's a clamour from the, the mines at the moment especially for fairly large-scale, utility-scale self-generation projects. So now, th I suppose the devil's going to be in the detail. You know, what does the Section 34 notice look like? What is in the Schedule 2 amendment? And obviously, you know, we know from the nuclear ruling, uh, the, uh, the, the, the court has said that in order to have these determinations in a sort of competent legal uh, form, 
we need to have nurses concurrence. And to get nurses concurrence, you have to have a public participation process. It's not just going to be a signature, a sign-off. So we need to get these documents published you know, immediately so that a nurse which has other issues on its plate, so such as the hearings into Eskom's RCA, can find time to have these urgent uh, public consultations in some format. Uh, and maybe it will have to take a different format so that we can start these procurement programs, both the, the, the next bid window for renewable energy, which the president also announced that would go ahead, um, as well as the other procurement programs, the emergency procurement program, and then facilitating the, the, the self-generation projects. How do you think business and investors will respond? I think generally, positively, obviously the overhang of the night was the, the disruption of the EFF, which, which creates, cast a whole negative shroud and, uh, around the event. And uh, it was a massive distraction and a very unhelpful one. I think when the EFF did this in the past, it was to make a point that the president that was delivering the State of the Nation was not honoring its o his oath of office. And therefore, it was almost a democratic action. This is an anti-democratic action. This is, not, this is a distraction from what the nation now needs to do. So I think that there will be a rallying around the president's core message of partnership, getting back to fundamentals, building a capable state from business and the other social partners. And more and more, I think we'll see peak EFF and an isolation of that sort of behavior. I think there's the tolerance levels in society for that sort of behavior and undemocratic, anti-constitutional, sort of uh, not allowing people uh, to the right to hear their president. I think uh, it has come to a point where I think society and parliamentarians, the majority of parliament, 89% of parliamentarians wanted to listen to the speech and 11% minority was allowed to delay it for an hour and a half unacceptable. We need to move on to a new, a new uh, platform of engagement in Parliament. The rules may need to have to change and possibly the best way is to hit some of these MPs in the pocket. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.